Hey folks, it's me, Dr. Mike, for Renaissance Periodization. And you asked for it, it's here. The Bench Press Guide for Hypertrophy, Hyperfetry, Hyperfetry. Some people do really struggle with that word. And um, I don't struggle with words, I'm quite verbose, but I do struggle with Definitely my sexuality, as Scott the Video Guy just pointed out. I'm addicted to adult films. I just picked up smoking as a habit. Um, Jesus, this is really hard to say. <laughs> just, I'll just say it. I have a nasty habit of picking up truck drivers at truck stops. And like, you guys ever see that where the hyenas get like one of the deer limbs off and they just, eight of them are pulling it. That's me at a truck stop. I'm the deer limb. It feels so good. They don't tell you that in sex ed class when they're like, respect your body. But what if disrespect is the thing that turns me on? I wanna be a piece of meat in the wind. In any case, why did you click on this video? It was to see bench press tips to make sure your pecs grow better. So let's get the fuck into that. And I should just never say anything outside of exercise ever again. Tip number one, here we go. Okay, so the first tip in the bench press to hit the pecs better is to arch the back, not a ton, just a little bit works. Take your scapulae and retract them. What that does is it brings your sternal pecs into play and puts you in a real power position for the chest. And it also, by retracting the scapulae, pre-stretches the chest so that when you're down here, it's way less shoulders, way less shoulder joint. And pre-stretch pecs means your chance for muscle growth induction is just much higher. A lot of people who bench flat-backed and with their shoulders flared out, that's like the football program in high school bench press. They're the ones that are like, yeah, man, I used to bench, but my shoulders got the better of me. I was a competitive powerlifter for years. Don't worry, don't bother Googling it. I was never very strong. And I benched for my entire powerlifting career. And other than in high school, before I was a powerlifter, before I learned how to archer retract, I've never one single time hurt my shoulder in the bench press ever. So how you would do this in real life is you would get down onto a bench, which I will demonstrate gladly for YouTube. First thing you do, is you walk your scapulae towards your butt. This arches your back. Again, you don't have to crazy arch, just a little bit. And as you walk them back, you also walk them in. It's gonna take a couple walks, really tuck them in there. And then you'll grab the bar. Notice the bar is gonna lay pretty low. If you reach up, you lose all that shit. So you should set the bar low, grab the shit. Hopefully you can get a spotter to help you unrack, push the bar over to the position. And then sometimes, especially if you're doing higher repetitions, what you want to do is kind of tuck it again a little bit to reinforce that pattern. As the bar descends, you keep your chest stuck way in the air and you press and way in the air and then you press. And while I'm down here, let's just knock out tip number two. So tip one is arch and retract. Tip number two, is to take a pause at the chest. Especially with slow eccentric control, a pause at the chest can make sure you really milk out the unbelievable amount of tension through your stretched pecs. That will help you grow a ton. So you hear your chest is stuck out. You bring down just to around your nipple line. Pause, not caving over. Chest still big, everything stretched. This will not feel good. This pause does not feel like a rest. It feels like, holy shit, my pecs are gonna blow up. And then press to a full lockout. Chest up and pause and press. As you do more reps, you'll get tempted to collapse and cave over. So remind yourself to keep your scapulae tucked, reach your pecs out to touch and press. Reach your pecs out to touch, pause and press. Just like that. Next tip, hand position. What you want out of your hand position is for your wrists to feel good, your elbows to feel good, your shoulders to feel good, and also for you to get a nice, gnarly, deep stretch in your pecs and feel the movement in your pecs. 
Some people, based on their build, will have a relatively close grip, and that's how they'll feel chest the most. Some people can even do a very wide grip, and that's how they feel chest the most. Other people, if they try a wide grip, it just kind of feels like it's a ton of pain in their shoulders and nothing else is happening. So with your grip, play around to find out what's best for you. Start with just outside of shoulder width grip. Try one fist length out. You guys are used to fist lengths, I'm sure. So fist length is like here and here. Now we're out here. Fist length in is here. Another fist length in is here, so on and so forth. Play with fist lengths at first. If one of them feels almost good, you're like, you know, this feels great. This feels a little bit worse, but this doesn't feel ideal. Play with finger lengths instead between those two. You will find a really, really good pressing point. The way you can tell again is all of your joints feel great and your pecs are getting torn to shreds at the bottom. That's how you find hand grip. And again, there's not one right answer. It could be multiple answers. You can say, oh, I like the wide variant. That feels great. It also feels a different kind of great to go a little closer. No wrong answers. Just make sure you're paying attention to those cues if your joints feel good and your muscles feel like they're getting really, really fucked up. What to do about elbow flare? A couple things to say about this. Some people will bench press guillotine style where they take a higher position on the chest and they let their elbows come up. They feel a huge stretch in the pecs, their shoulders feel amazing, no problem, correct answer. Other folks will touch a little bit below the nipple line actually on their abdomen and they will tuck their elbows on the way down. You'll see this from shirted pressing back in the day from equipped powerlifting. If that is what hits your pecs the most and it makes your elbows and shoulders feel nice and comfy and safe, beautiful. Right answer. What I don't want you guys to get caught up in is people on the internet who say, this is bad because biomechanics. I don't know where the fuck they say that because if you go out here, notice my pecs are getting more stretched as I pull out. There's lots of people saying you gotta tuck in the elbows to do more chest. That's fucking backwards. If you tuck in the elbows, the line of pull aligns better with the front delts and it's more triceps. Front delts and triceps is more like tucked the wider you go, all the way up till here, is more pecs. However, not everyone can handle wide and it can fuck your shoulders up. My best recommendation for you is this. Don't worry about where your elbows go at all. Set up a comfortable hand position, arch and retract. Focus on your chest. Your elbows will naturally position themselves to a point that is easy on your joints and hard on your muscles. If it takes a little bit of finagling, by all means do it. So if you do naturally and you're like, I don't know, my shoulders feel kind of meh, try a little bit more in, just a tad. Oh, shoulders feel great. Even more in. Shoulders feel amazing, but I don't feel my chest much anymore. Boom, you found it, that's the right answer. But if you want to flare, no problem at all. As long as you gently pause, there is a very minimum risk of injury. Yes, if you're crashing down with a trillion pounds, and you're not pausing and you're using sets of four or five, benching like this will fuck you up. But then benching like this will probably fuck you up too, just in a different way. Be measured, feel your body out, start with a natural elbow angle, adjust a little bit, see how it affects your shoulders, your elbows, etc. Back 10 years ago, when I was, geez, already on my way to getting a PhD, it was in a PhD program, I thought there was correct technique that was basically identical for everyone. And then I fucking took one of my balls out and hit it with a hammer to punish myself because that was fucking stupid because everyone's built a little bit differently. Some people are built a lot differently. Different ratios of lower and upper arm lengths, different interacromial widths, different shapes subtly of pecs and shoulders and triceps, different slight uh, variations in design of the shoulder joint. So that if you tell people everyone should do this or everyone should do this, it's out of the gate fucking wrong. It could have a grain of truth. It could have a lot of truth to it, but don't just be like, oh, this is optimal, but my shoulders hurt. I don't feel my chest, but this is optimal because biomechanics. Fuck all that noise. Start with the basics, play around with some variations. Your body will find the right thing for you to do. And if it doesn't, I guess your body's just fucking stupid and wrong. I'm kidding, I hope. All right, last tip coming up. Last tip for the day, 
for getting a lot out of chest growth in the bench press is to make sure that you are controlling the eccentric. This will bring you no love in how much you can bench for reps. But so if you want hypertrophy, you don't care. Slow eccentric does not mean five seconds or 10, but it means you don't dump the bar on your chest. It means that you take a few seconds to really lower. And while you're lowering, I want you to think of reaching your chest up while having the fibers pulled apart. That sensation of the fibers pulling apart as you reach up is not something you should try to avoid. And I know that sounds weird because normally in, in real life, if your shit is getting pulled apart, you're like, I shouldn't be here. I should get out. I should rush this. Remember, you're here to get them pull apart because that's what stimulates growth. So you're gonna reach up the whole time and your chest is gonna be pulled apart. Pause gently, press. Big reach, big chest, slow and up. And as you reach close to failure, don't start going faster. It is not a rep counting competition. From week one in your mesocycle, big chest, slow, gentle touch and up. On the way up, Go fast, fuck yeah, produce some force. Slow, lock, slow, lock, control, lock. Notice it's not super slow. This is a perfectly fine cadence and will fuck your chest into some planet of the solar system. Now, which planet? Mars? No. Neptune? No, that was a production company back in the early 2000s. What's up, Pharrell? Uranus. I'm sure you have one. Folks, thanks for tuning in. Sorry for all the derogatory speech earlier. I don't know what happened to me. We'll see you next time for more exercise instructions, learning about exercise science, sport science, and more of my perversions. See you next time.